episode one of Industry Insights. So today I'm joined by Simon Murdoch, CTO of Spinnaker. Spinnaker are a distribution uh, organisation in the UK who focus on bringing new technologies to the EMEA market. I've asked him to give us a, a view of his day in life as well as how he's got to this point in his career. Some top tips that you can use to progress your careers as well as a lightning round for a bit of fun to understand what makes him tick. What books does he read? What music does he listen to? I hope you enjoy it. Please like and subscribe. Leave your comments below. Episode 2 will be out next week. Simon, thanks for uh, joining me today for this session. Um, I think it's going to be quite interesting to understand how your career has has progressed over the years, but then also into some of the industry insights is is your role within Spinnaker has um, changed over the last 12, 18 months, especially this pandemic. Um, so can I just get you to introduce yourself so that the audience can understand who you are, what you do, and um, why they should listen to this, this video? Yeah, thanks. Thanks very much for having me. Uh, great to be here. So I'm Simon Murdoch. Uh, current role is uh, CTO at uh, Spinnaker. Uh, that's a IT distributor within the UK and EMEA. Um, so current role entails uh, us bringing new technologies to market. We try and focus on uh, new emerging and disruptive technologies. Uh, the idea being that we go and uh, source tech from uh, the US, Silicon Valley, uh, quite a few vendors from Israel at the moment, uh, and help them come to market in the UK uh, before they have to invest, uh, I guess, a significant amount of uh, time and money in, in people, sales teams, SEs. We give them that first sort of initial footprint into the market. Perfect. Thank you. And so where, where, where did your career start out? What did you do and, and, and how did it progress? Um, so, I mean, back when I left school, I uh, sort of, I suppose most teenage boys, I guess you leave school and don't really know what you're going to do, right? Um, I took an aptitude test um, due to lack of a better option and uh, the machine spat out that I'd be quite good at doing technology or something IT related. And uh, at that time, the sort of the, the MCSE was the track. It was the thing that every, everybody was doing, MCSE 2000. Um, so I started off. Uh, at a college in South Africa and did uh, a plus sort of how computers work engineering degree uh, with Windows NT4 uh, followed by my MCSE 2000 exams which uh, I can't remember how many times but anyway I did a lot of exams there got, got through it in the end um, so yeah so that was that was a starting point and I, I sort of fell into it I guess rather than having a, a career path uh, set out for me to follow it was it was more I wouldn't say lack of a better option, but it just uh, it just seemed to be something that uh, I was always into computers and playing games when I was a kid. Uh, always pretty interested in in the, the PC that we had at home and breaking it and fixing it. So it seemed like a logical thing to get into, um, not knowing what else to do. Right? Yeah, I think from a few of these sessions that I've been doing, I think everyone's kind of come to the conclusion that they've, they've fallen into this role, right? Or they've fallen into this industry. They didn't necessarily choose to to have a career in technologies per se. They, they were probably looking at things like, well, when I finish school, uh, as you do as a child, I wanna be an astronaut or a, a doctor or, or a solicitor or a lawyer or whatever. No one's really sat there and went, I wanna be an application developer for Microsoft or whatever, right? So- <laughs> I wanna I think, be on the DevOps team. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whereas now yeah. if you went and asked that same question to someone that was just coming out of, out of college and high school and university and things that the answers will be very different, right? Yeah, or well, net network security seems to be a thing. I mean, if, if you're coming out of college now with a with, you know business science degree or you know any degree in technical, I mean, you know, you'd, you'd be aiming for AI, machine learning, data scientists, or security. You just got to be you know on the, on the very top of the list, just because those are the things that are you know, prevalent in every every uh, enterprise and non-enterprise organization going forward. So yeah, uh, where's yeah. back? Back, back in the day, in my age away, you know, IT was was definitely something that uh, happened in the back room in the office, uh, rather than 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 driving the business, right? Yeah, and it's like that, that image that people have of IT people sat in the basement with fairly large obese bodies with pizza boxes all over the, the place, and, cans of and beer and whatever else. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I wish those days did actually ever occur, but I don't. I think I maybe have one of those day experiences in my entire career so far where we did an all nighter. 
resolving some challenges for, for a customer. And yeah, we had pizza and a couple of drinks and things, but it, it wasn't as, uh, as what it looked like in that image from, from say the nineties. The, the kind of creator like fell into it and you progressed through. And then obviously we've worked together at, at um, Kelway and then CDW when they acquired Kelway, which was, mm. which was great. And then you've now moved on to um, <clears throat> Spinnaker and you know, um, CTO of Spinnaker doing that role. What, what's the day in a life of a CTO at Spinnaker look like? Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned, so you know, bringing new vendors, um, mostly disruptive, mostly emerging technologies. Um, there's a fair amount of, I would say, it's a 50-50 split, but obviously we need to to source those vendors. Uh, my my job is to understand the technology um, to a fairly in-depth level, uh, and then help position that technology within the channel, within the, the partner community, be that sales or technical. So we take vendor A, uh, understand their value proposition, and then go to any number of partners uh, that either specialize in that kind of uh, technology storage, for example, um, and then say to their sales team, right, you know, this is how we're going to sell it. These are the type of the customers that you'd be looking for, and this is the message that you want to take to them um, or to the technical uh, community within that partner to, to a slightly uh, kind of more technical uh, layer, I guess, why it's better, you know, where it fits, where it doesn't fit compared to some of the, uh, we'll call them the tier one vendors that, that most people would be familiar with. We're a small team, um, you know, up to 10 at the moment. So uh, it's technical sales, marketing, pre-sales, post-sales. It's a, it's, a, it's a little bit of everything. Um, I think that uh, we're, we're growing quite quickly. Uh, we're lucky enough to have been uh, I'll say not too badly affected by COVID. You know, everybody's been, but we're, we're still going and, and we've got some, some, some really nice prospects happening. Uh, we've managed to get through it. And um, yeah, every day is, you know, it's a, it's a new challenge. You, you, you could be sitting there and, and, you know, having a slow day or, or be flat out. It just depends on, on which vendors and which partners are reacting to the, the technologies that you're, you're positioning with them. I wouldn't say that you're anywhere near um, your finish line yet, your your retirement or anything like that. For as much as we'd all love to retire early, um, what what yeah. what is your finish line? What's your goal? Where do you want to get to? Um, it's that's a it's a tough one, really. I don't, as you said, I don't think there's a there's kind of no there's no line in the sand that when I get there I'm going to sort of have a have a parade or a party. I think it's uh, it's probably more milestones. Um, We'll start every day with getting out of bed as milestone number one, right? <laughs> get the kids out of bed, get them to school, uh, have a coffee and go. Um, I think milestone two is going to be kind of getting through the pandemic and and and, and coming out as unscathed as possible, uh, both from a financial and from a health point of view. Listening to um, to some of the Young World keynotes and things this week, and Pat Gelsinger going on about the whole democratization of AI and how. VMware want to bring that into a, a commoditized, usable format so that people can crunch data and yeah, and make more of their data. And I think that's if I look at like what a lot of the, the larger enterprises in the vendor space at the moment are doing is that they're all trying to race to that that goal. I think to be able to monetize data because we're well aware, right? Data is is more valuable than than gold and oil combined today. <laughs> and I think that the the vendor that gets there first and can actually make that affordable for most businesses is is going to make a killing well and that's yeah i mean we, we've got uh yeah obviously i've mentioned kind of emerging and, and disruptive technologies a number of times we've got you know two or three vendors arguably that are in that space uh and i mean nvidia seems to be taking over the world at the moment um and working with nvidia to bring their uh kind of their value into that that chain and um as, as I said, you know, if you're a data scientist or if you're planning on looking into something like that, that's, uh, you know, there's a, there's a huge um, area of success there waiting, waiting for you. And on, on that kind of, kind of thought process, right? So it's like, obviously, everyone says, what, when you're younger, what would you like to do when you grow up, right? So what, if, we, if we take a step back and say, what did you want to do when you finished school? What is it that was your, your dream job? What was the, the, the kid desire? What was it? You know, when we when we were um, you know, when we were kids, it's been being in South Africa, right? We did a lot of just faffing around, as we call it. You know, there wasn't a lot of uh, Sydney in my childhood. There wasn't a lot of sort of alignment to uh, or, or pressure, maybe from parents to to, to be going in a certain direction in terms of 
a career, um, I guess one of the reasons it came out and I was just kind of like, oh, yeah, what, what am I going to do now? But um, I think one of the big aspirations was to travel, you know, uh, being at the, the, the bottom end of Africa is fairly limiting in terms of your worldly experience, uh, a great place to, to grow up. Um, but uh, the idea was to pack a bag and go and see the world, really. Uh, if you ask me now, what do I do when I, when I grow up? It's kind of, a, I want to be less of an adult, right? Less adulting every day would be great. Um, I feel like that, that there's just a lot of it at the moment. So it's kids, look forward, like kids do that. I look forward to the day when I can just get up and not have responsibilities just for a day. <laughs> yeah, it'd be brilliant, right? Yeah. And so what would you say is your most memorable moment mm. in your career? The outstanding memorable moment? Um, I mentioned, so I worked for uh, a charity for a number of years. Um, anybody wants to look on LinkedIn, you'll find out who it is. So, <laughs> um, so I did five or six years and I, I progressed from first line, second line, third line, kind of serve engineering team and did all that and learned a huge amount. But I think it was a, it was a long time to be um, a big fish in a small, small pond, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, and then through a relationship, got um, got a chance to have an interview at you know this big consultancy and partner reseller that was Calway back in the day. And I remember catching a cab, black cab, from um, where where I worked into the city. And and I never went into the city. I just went from my home to the office and back again. Right? You never go into the city if you don't need to. If you're not that way inclined, uh, or work doesn't take you there. And suddenly there I was, and um, you know just sitting down have an interview, you know, I'm a pretty straightforward guy when it comes down to it in my younger years, I had to say it like it was and, and, and then got given a, you know, a handwritten test, drew out some diagrams, how would you do this and how would you do that and kind of handed it back to the guy who was interviewing me and left and I think it was that afternoon or the next day when I got the call to say, okay, well, you know, you got a job. It was a huge moment for me um, and I think it was, it was also a turning point, uh, definitely in terms of my career and, and suddenly when you work in an environment where there's so much happening, there's, there's such a lot of uh, kind of enthusiasm for a technical community. And, and that, that just really turned me on to the excitement uh, of what a career working in the city uh, for, for a large and successful business uh, was. And that, that was, yeah, that was it, turning point. Flipping it on its head. So if we mm-hmm. were thinking about the, the, the biggest mistake that you made in your career, um, and the greatest lesson that you learn from it, what, what would that be? I would, I would say it's, it's just being static, um, not so much a mis- mistake, but just uh, comf- comfortable, being comfortable, maybe being a bit lazy, uh, didn't have, you know, when you're younger, you don't have much direction, you go to work, you get paid, you go out, have a good time, uh, put loose, fancy, free, not to sound like a dad, but, um, you know, you don't really have too many commitments. And I think I went through a, a a fairly long period of my uh, early career where I really didn't have much ambition to progress myself in terms of career. I was quite happy to just be there and be hopefully relatively good at what I did without yeah. um, looking looking forward or looking up. Uh, in hindsight, probably lost a, a number of years there that I could have been a little bit more productive with. Could have just a little fire a little earlier under my ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put yourself moving a bit. I was speaking yeah. to. Um... I was speaking to one of my friends the other day and he, he's, he's, he's in that kind of scenario, right? He's content in what he does as a job and he doesn't have any ambition to progress from that area. He likes, in this circumstance, he likes doing networking. He loves working with Cisco mm. and that's all he wants to do. He doesn't want to do anything else. He doesn't want to transition into cloud or, or, or yeah, AI think- or automation or DevOps. He just loves configuring switches and supporting switch environments and routing environments. I think you got as, to- as, as, a, as a support engineer, right? And yeah, and he was saying, like, well, I've been made redundant and um, I, I now need to find a new job. What do you advise? And I was like, well, if that's what you love doing and you don't want to progress, then just focus on carrying on doing that. Don't try and be something that you don't want to Plenty be. Plenty of switches fail, out there. Right? <laughs> yeah. But I think you go through stages in your life where it's probably, um, you know, whatever your driving factor is, if you're comfortable and you, 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 know, you go to work, you know you're going to be good at your job and then you're going to leave and you know you're going to get paid, then um, that that for a period of your of your life is 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 what you need um whereas there'll be other periods where you know got married had kids you're like okay actually i i need to progress here otherwise i'm not going to be able to fulfill the next five to 15 years of of 
you know, expectation. Um, so driving factors, I suppose, are, are, are the things there, you know, it's just levels, levels of comfort um, that will drive pressures and success. Yeah. Yeah. And generally starting a family and all those kind of things and, and supporting that family can also put additional pressures and stresses on to, to force people into maybe doing things that they're not that comfortable doing as well, which can be a good thing and yeah. at the same time be a bad thing. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people sacrifice the partying and sacrifice um, various things in their lives to, to get to where they want to get to in their career. Is there anything you think you've sacrificed along the way that, that you, you wish you hadn't or, or things that you could take back? So, yeah, probably more just, I don't, I don't think there's anything I've, I've specifically looked back and, and feel like I've, I've missed out on or, or, or missed out on because I've sacrificed something. I think kind of nothing but time. I think that if I had to do that when I had young children around, then I'd say, okay, well, look, I sacrificed time with kids, but you know, I, I didn't. It was just me. Um, so I suppose there's a, a moral there. If you've got time to put in the graph now, um, you know, do, do it rather than when potentially there's something that will be more important, um, like spending time with family and and, and kids uh, that comes along. You know, take advantage of the time you have. Yeah, definitely. And. I think everyone in, in technology, especially when you come through the lines of the, similar to myself, of first, second, third line support, then into consultancy, then into pre-sales and architecture design mm. and so on and so forth, right? Mm. What would you say is like the, the part of your career that almost pushed you to quitting and then how did you overcome it? I not to take stuff too seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think, you know, once people find out that, that you're quite good at doing something, then that's what you become known for and that's what you do. Uh, and I know you feel this pain as well. Um, you know, you you can you can be create you create a brand for yourself, and you you do your thing, and then uh, people start to layer it on top, and they be like, oh, Simon can do that, or Simon can do that, and Simon can do that, and then it just it gets more and more. And because you're good at it, and because you've spent so long creating a brand for yourself, being good at it, turning people down or turning them away or producing, you know, maybe uh, not sub sub sort of below par work uh, is, you know, I take pride in everything that I do. So you then end up kind of burning, burning the candle at both ends uh, and, and committing to things that maybe you can't handle and then it becomes stressful and it has a knock on effect on. Um, there have been times where, you know, taking on too much to, to make sure that everything goes as well as you can, uh, as, as well as it can, um, has led to, you know, some, some, We'll call them bad thoughts, <laughs> yeah. but uh, has, led, has, 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 has led to a point. I've never got to the to breaking point. I think that um, in any environment, and especially today, you know, with lockdown and mobile working and everything, you, uh, you know, and there's no such thing as a nine to five job, right? So you, you're always kind of clocked in and hopefully a lot of people who listening to this will be working for an organization that is not expecting you to log on at nine and finish at five um, because life happens and now that everybody's at home life happens more um, you can't get away from it and last question on like career kind of approaches and things if, if you were going to advise someone that's starting out in the industry what would be that your, your top three tips there's so many occasions where where either I've been presenting to people or uh, maybe people have been presenting to us in a room. We've all been in that room uh, together fairly often. And I always feel like people come in and they're quite happy to sit down and, and listen, and maybe take it in. Maybe they don't take it in. I know, but but never be the one who never asks any questions. Um, I'm, I'm quite well known for being the guy who is probably memorable because I ask I don't know if they're intelligent questions, probably not, but you know, no such thing as stupid question, right? If somebody's coming at you with, okay, this is, this is our product. This is what we do. And this is why it's amazing. Um, I'm, for starters, I'm not going to let people just get away with going, Oh, it's amazing because I say so. Right. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's also, you know, if, if, if you're there, you should be engaged and you should take the information that's available to you. That's only one. Uh, maybe the top tip would be to, 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 always be willing to share your knowledge with somebody else uh, with a view to going, okay, well, you know, if, I, if I'm helping you, then I'm going to expect some help back when I need it at some stage. I think um, we can kind of wrap that up from a career question perspective. Let's, let's change gear and go towards some of the industry impacts. Um, so 
obviously the industry has changed quite a lot from from the 2000s when when well 1990 2000 when you guys when you started right and um what would you say how has it changed how has it impacted um people's lives but then also how's it imp- impacted organizations how's it has it changed for you the biggest change has got to be uh it you know it's the driving force of you know the human race arguably uh you know it is driving all kinds of amazing things from you know uh spacex to to um you know finding a cure for covid um if we look at like technology what do you reckon is a a technology that's taking your interest today what is the 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 main thing that you're thinking well that is that is something that, that people really need to focus on right now so uh touched on it earlier so so ai machine learning um i think uh, NVIDIA um, DGX A100 uh, beast that they've brought out. Um, if anybody's listening and doesn't know what that is, just go and have a Google and watch a four or five minute video on their landing page. Um, you know, it's it's a it's an amazing machine um, for for AI machine learning, the sort of graphics uh, acceleration and processing. You only have to have open LinkedIn to see anybody who's anybody is attaching themselves to anybody who's got a story about AI yeah. and machine learning, right? So from security products through to, you know, autonomous vehicles and, and, and things like that. So it's pretty exciting out there. Obviously, um, I think there's a fair amount of arguments as to uh, sort of AI and machine learning not really delivering what we thought it might. Um, but, you know, if people are plowing a huge amount of money into it, um, and there's some some very, very impressive technologies out there that either deliver the capability to learn um, or are then uh, sitting on top of these machines that that, that do that. And it's, uh, yeah, I think yeah, in the next five years, that's going to be the boom. Has to be. Yeah. yeah, I agree. And from a day-to-day perspective, right, there's always that that unsung technology or product or something that you use day-to-day that, that that people aren't aware of. So like for me, for example, like the things like the, the old 365 bundle people buy into, right? People don't use stream and teams properly and planner and forms and flow and all the various things that are part of that bundle. Right? Yeah. So some of those like unsung heroes in IT, right? You can do so much with them that people just don't understand. Um, what would what would be your unsung hero at this moment in time? I'd say Zwift. I don't know if you've uh, if you've been onto Zwift as a platform. Um, I think with uh, with everybody being locked at home, uh, I suppose we've, we've been allowed to exercise, but it is much easier just to do it with everything that's going on. So Zwift as a as a platform, I suppose cycling and running and being able to attach uh, smart uh, trainers uh, and um, it's pretty impressive. You know, at any given time, there's sort of eight to twelve thousand people cycling their indoor bicycles on a platform all with each other communicating texting messaging shouting thumbs upping um yeah amazing bit of tech uh, mostly cloud-based has to be said in in a lot of organizations that obviously we've spoken to over the years when we've been working together but then more expressively with with what you've been seeing in the market now what what is an area that people are just not investing in automation um I suppose different people have different uh, ideas about what automation is. Um, I think that there are a lot of, uh, I suppose, we, you know, starters is there's RPA automation. So you've got the likes of PwC and Deloitte, and they talk about automation as RPA. Um, if you go to someone like TDW Recovery, automation is going to be more about automating the delivery of, of an IT service uh, rather than um, kind of bringing data through different management paths um, and processes. So uh, regardless, I think that there's a lot to be said about automating mundane tasks. Um, There are still a lot of very large enterprise organizations, financial institutes that have, um, you know, entire buildings dedicated to, that's the back end office, right? That's where people go to punch data into databases. Um, And, you know, it has to be said, it's, it's, those people should be doing something a little bit more um I don't know, what's what's the word um more uh, business value driven rather yeah than more value value focus to, on data input <laughs> to that business but then just doing something that a machine can do you know the idea behind automation um for me is is to enable a workforce uh to be more valuable to that organization and to develop in a in a in a, in a better way uh, rather than to make them redundant obviously the biggest hurdle that organizations face is, is structural change in order to deal with that automation right so 
people yeah. are, or, or just easy to go, no, let them sit in that office and punch away um, rather than actually going in and making the change. So yeah, I think I think there's a lot to be said for that. Yeah, I think that's where like um, a lot of the conversations I know I've been having recently is around the, the cultural changes and impacts that has on teams. Um, so I've been on a leadership and management apprenticeship the last few months and we've been talking about leadership styles and cultural change and managing change and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. When I go in to see some of our customers and I can see the guy that's opposite me, I'm thinking I'm going to mention DevOps and automation here and this guy's going to crawl inside himself because he thinks I'm going to take take his job away or I'm going to mention the cloud and he's going to he's going to cry because the server that he's been been hugging for the past 10 years is yeah, yeah. taken away from him. But luckily, it's not as bad as it used to be, <laughs> but it still happens, right? You go into this room and as soon as you sit down, you know that person, right? You can see themselves. All right, I'm ready. Last technology purchase and why? Uh, Garmin well, from my back. <laughs> Garmin, Garmin for my bike. Awesome. Uh, who's your going. biggest inspiration? Uh, I don't know about inspiration. Um, I think that if you're looking for a hero, uh, Sia Khaleesi, uh, Springbok, rugby captain, nice. leader of nations, what a hero. <laughs> uh, and what does work life balance mean to you? Um, if it's not that urgent, I could probably wait until tomorrow. So I can spend some time with my family. Cool. Um, what did you want to do when you finished school? Which we've already covered. So let's see if you can remember. <laughs> uh, travel. Uh, what's your favorite book? Power of One, Bryce Courtney. Okay, nice. So that's a good thing. Most important thing to you? Family. Family and <laughs> boys. Uh, I'd like to say eight hours of sleep, but that's been a long time. Yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> and what would be your words of wisdom if it was in a tweet? So 140 characters or less. Oh, don't squat with your spurs on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, uh, everybody has strengths and weaknesses uh, and use your strengths to help other people's. Good song. Ooh. I don't even Fail. listen to the, Next. I don't even listen to the radio. <laughs> uh, above and beyond. Okay. Podcasts. That'll do. That'll get you through the day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fill in the blank. The new normal is... Mask. Mask. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a COVID, but I guess mask is probably better, right? <laughs> okay, well, uh, must watch TV show. Uh, a modern family, thanks to my wife. Okay, and last but not least, favorite junk food? Chocolate, just any chocolate. Any yeah. chocolate. You have to be careful what you say, right? Because your missus might watch this back and know. You oh no, she knows. Eat. She knows. She <laughs> stocks it well. It's a one. It's my one thing. Uh, I used to <laughs> used to smoke a lot. Now I just eat chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, I think we can uh, we can call it wrap there. So thanks for uh, spending the last hour or so with me on on, on creating this session. Um, hopefully, people can um, watch this back and provide us feedback in the comments, and um, hopefully, we can do some more videos in the future.